Hello there, my name is Brandon McDonald. I am a freelance digital artist and I exclusively use Corel products for my work. I'm going to be showing you one of the ways that I shade and render. Here I've decided to go with warm ambient occlusion lighting and cold cast shadows. So I've started by creating a new layer over the sketch, uh, setting that layer to multiply, and filling it with a warm color. Ambient occlusion is just the kind of shading that gives each area of the body its individual level of depth. However, with only ambient occlusion, you're lacking overall depth. Think of ambient occlusion like the face of a coin. There's depth and form, but it's still flat. For some reason, I have found it most comfortable to use the solid edge eraser at 5% opacity for both the ambient occlusion layer and the cast shadow layer. I actually normally would outline it at the beginning so any shading outside the lines won't distract me. Also having a brighter color in the background gives your eye a sense of normalcy, I think. If you're painting something dark that has a dark background, it's easy to make it too dark with not enough contrast, at least for me. Okay, now onto the cool cast shadow layer. It's another layer also set to multiply, just like the ambient occlusion layer. For this step, I like to make the ambient occlusion layer invisible while I work with the cast shadow layer. Uh, this way I don't confuse myself or get them mixed up. Remember, it's important that one layer is strictly ambient occlusion and the other layer is strictly cast shadows if you're going to do it this way. Cast shadows are just that, shadows that are cast by something from a light source. In this case, it's an overhead light source. The cast shadows aren't super accurate but I like to have fun while I paint more than I care about hyper-realistic accuracy. Anyway, the antennae are casting shadows and the head is casting a shadow. Now's the point where you get to see your ambient occlusion layer and your cast shadow layers combined. I highly recommend um, changing the opacity of both layers individually before you continue. What I'm doing here with the turquoise is just adding atmosphere um, it just adds some more depth. Now here I'm about to add an overlay layer. It's just for a highlight to bring the head a little bit even further into the foreground. And then of course you have the reflected light from the ground bouncing back up onto the stomach or uh, bottom. Here I've added a cast shadow underneath him and now it's time for color. So uh, you have pretty much endless options when it comes to color so I just kind of quickly came up with something. Also you've also, you'll notice that I put the color layer beneath all of the other layers. If you put the color layer, if you put the color layer on top of all the other layers, you'll lose the coolness of your cast shadows, and you'll lose the warmth of your ambient shadows. So you really want to be sure you put that color layer underneath. Otherwise, you leave, you lose that color variation. Uh, now I'm just going to shut up for a minute and you can just watch me color and uh, also add a little bit more reflected light underneath. So here I wasn't really liking the amount of red there was, so I duplicated the color layer and uh, changed the color of that duplicated layer and then erased parts of it to bring that red through. Now here I decided that I didn't really like the weapon, so um, I looked up some reference images of shale uh, and arrowheads and just kind of started um, painting it.
And at this point, I guess I decided to start rendering the rest of the caterpillar. Here I've skipped ahead a tiny bit. I'm just doing more rendering and um, basically just adding contrast and a little bit more interest and in color saturation here and there. Uh, a little bit of specular lighting and um, maybe some more reflected lighting. Um, yeah, just just painting. Changing the color of the butt here. Don't ever be afraid to change something in in your paintings. Um, even even if it's kind of a pain to change, if you think it will change it for the better, you might as well do it rather than just be unhappy with what you've done. You're um, adding a bit more specular light around the kind of mouthy area. Makes it look kind of a little bit wet almost. Um, and also still helps even more to define the shapes a little bit. A little bit more. And right before this part, I had asked what my girlfriend thought of the image, and um, she said that the spots looked a little dark, which I totally agreed with, but sometimes it's really hard to see for yourself what is wrong with the, what's wrong with your artwork if you've been staring at it for, you know, however many hours. So it's always really good to ask advice of people around you. Here with the lines, I'm pretty much just, or the stripes, I'm pretty pretty much just uh, messing around. I don't know, seeing what I can come up with with an overlay layer, just just playing around with it, kind of having fun. Um, because you should have fun with the things that you do. So yeah, I, d I don't think I ended up going with it anyways, but I mean, you know, Cool things can come out of just experimenting with designs. <clears throat> I um, painted a background with the camera off uh, because I was just kind of messing around and wasn't sure if I was really going to get something figured out out of it, uh, but I did. So it's basically just a texture layer on the ground and a color layer for the sky and the ground. Here's the final illustration after it, all the equalizing and um, sharpening and blurring. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care.